For the past two years, social media has been overloaded with images and videos of people taking crispy, red-stained tacos and drowning them in a deep maroon broth known as birria. I first tried birria back in 2013 on a trip to Guadalajara, Mexico, but back then it was unknown to American audiences. Today, a birria fandom uses this stew as the foundation for an even greater achievement, the birria taco. But how did this happen? How did birria earn American food stardom? Well, I'm about to tell you. You know, if you really want to tell the story of birria, there's probably a lot better places I could be right now. Uh, Los Angeles, somewhere in Texas, Dallas, Houston, Austin, um, maybe Mexico, Guadalajara. But no, I'm here in Wisconsin. And the fact that you can find birria here in my home state in the middle of February, and I'm standing freezing my ass off, just goes to show you how big birria's popularity has become. Let me tell you a quick story about my first experience with birria. It was back in 2013 when I took a trip to the historic city of Guadalajara, Mexico. I only knew of two must-try foods in the city, torta ahogadas and tacos dorados. Both were excellent, by the way. But it was upon meeting two other travelers, Raul and Alan, that I learned about birria. Raul explained it to me. Birria is a Mexican stew that is usually eaten around special events, but it is famous here in Guadalajara. The next day, we arrived at Nueve Esquinas, a birreria that is famous for this slow-cooked stew. The food was incredible. It was the best meal I ate the entire trip. But even then, in 2013, America still had no idea about this special dish. In a few years, that would all change. So now that we have this backstory, it was important for me to see if I could find traditional birria in my city. And it just so happens that there's this restaurant, Taqueria El Jalapeño, that makes traditional birria on the weekends. Now before we get into how birria exploded onto the American food scene, you have to see this experience because they went all out for me. This is the seca. Okay. Seca, yeah. Awesome. And it's got sauce on it still. Sauce on top, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Birria seca, which basically translates to dry birria, was the first plate that they offered me. Basically, the meat from the stew is removed, um, pulled apart. They put a sauce over it. This is like the consomme? Uh, no, or is this just a sauce? This is the sauce, yes. Okay. Yeah, the consomme is more uh, the soup. Like the soup. Okay, this looks good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah but I have never seen it served this way, so this was sort of an unexpected treat. Perfectly tender meat. It's like falling apart as you, you pick at it. I mean, the only way that you're gonna get meat like this is just uh, patience, you know? Low heat and a lot of time. Uh, just does not get better than this. Mm. Everybody knows about the uh, the Mexican fork and spoon, also known as their tortilla. You know, you gotta have this at basically every single meal. So, put some of that here. A little bit of pico de gallo, let's spice things up a little bit. Mm. Don't be jealous you're not here, but this is some good stuff, you know? I picked the right place to get this birria. So we're gonna go into round two, which is the caldo. It's the classic traditional stew. You know, if you grew up in Mexico, um, or you live there at any point, it's probably what you're most used to, is the, uh, the birria stew. So um, I'm excited for this one. In the second round, they serve me the classic traditional caldo de birria. It gets its deep red color from dried guajillo chilies and is served with onions, cilantro, and then chili de arbol if you want to spice things up. So this is it, this is the classic birria. This is the traditional stew that most people come with. I mean, look at this, man. Like, oh my 
goodness. And then of course we have the garnishes. So you got onion and cilantro. And if you really want to spice it up, we got the chili de arbol. So, let's figure this out. Chili de rebel is a, it's kind of a secret pepper. It doesn't have the same sort of popularity as like the jalapeno or the habanero. It definitely uh, holds its own. You wonder why it's so red? And typically birria is made with dried guajillo chilies. So that's really what gives it its color. The water just soaks up the color. It's almost stained, like a stained blood red. Um, it's delicious. Yeah. Mm. You know, I'm a little scared. Think about the big soup companies like Progresso or Gamble's, and they know that birria is because just growing in popularity. You know, this is not a soup that you can eat out of a can. This is not an instant soup. The minute I see this on a shelf in a grocery store, uh, all bets are off. You know, you ruin the experience for everybody. And uh, this is how you're supposed to have it, right here, like this. My mom always said not to do this. This is what is popular, if I say right, right now in, in YouTube, yeah. uh, Facebook, this is what yeah. people are is, is asking. Okay. Uh, we don't do this because, like I say, it, it takes too long. So I want to stop this video because there they are, the famous red stain tacos that we see all over the internet. However, my waiter Enrique wanted to let you guys know that these unfortunately are not on the menu. So while you watch this experience, please remember that. Now, let's get back to it. These are the birria tacos, and this is what everyone sees online. Um, nice and crispy, you can see the cheese, look at this. I mean, that looks amazing. Now, unfortunately, this isn't on the menu here. Um, I'm getting special treatment, so. Little dip, little dunk. This is what I like to call the, uh, the taco baptism, you know? All right, let's go in. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So my time at El Jalapeño was done, but I wanted to learn more about these birria tacos. How did we go from traditional caldo to tacos? Who was responsible for this? And more importantly, how did birria explode onto the American food scene? So we're going to answer that question next, but first I wanted to introduce you to our company. We are El Norteño Beef Jerky, and this is our website at elnortenobeefjerky.com. We actually make a Cecina style of beef jerky, which you see here, and we make different flavors of meat sticks. We also recently came out with a new line of chicharrones, they're not on the site yet, but they do exist. I have a bag here. But first, I just want to thank you so much for making it this far in the video. And if you do decide to try our products, we really appreciate the support. If you use the coupon code JUSTGOBRANDON, we'll give you an extra 10% off. But now, let's get into how birria exploded on the American food scene. To continue that story, there's a few names you need to know. Teddy Vasquez and Omar and Oscar Gonzalez. The story of Birria's rise seems to begin in Los Angeles around the year 2015. At this time, food trucks serving up the Mexican stew started popping up around LA streets. And two food trucks in particular are being credited with sparking the Birria boom. Birria Gonzalez and Teddy's Red Tacos. Birria Gonzalez was started by Omar and Oscar Gonzalez in 2015. A year later, Teddy Vasquez opened Teddy's Red Tacos, becoming another option for hungry Angelinos. While LA was feverishly enjoying this new food trend, it was social media that truly catapulted birria into the national spotlight. 
Searches for birria tacos started to rise as red stained tacos started appearing on social media. But it was in March 2020, at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, that searches for birria tacos exploded in the United States. The country was now paying attention. Because of this, Mexican restaurants everywhere scrambled to get the addictive consomme on their menus. Birria food trucks began appearing in cities outside of Los Angeles. Soon, birria could be found in Houston, Dallas, New York, and even in the Midwest in cities like Milwaukee. So I grabbed my friend Mario and we head to Milwaukee because there's a new birreria in town that's been getting a lot of attention. And they go by the name of Chucho's Red Tacos. The internet has been going insane over this place, even saying the consomme is some of the best. We had to find out for ourselves. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a small consomme, one red taco, one casey taco. So we'll start with the tacos. And then if everything else is good, we're going for the ramen. This, this is our test. It's, this is our test, right? Chucho's ramen noodles in birria caught our attention, but first we wanted to try the tacos and the consomme to see if they were up for the billing. So we both started with the broth because this is what everybody's been talking about. And to be perfectly honest, they were right. This consomme was unforgettable and easily some of the best birria that we've eaten anywhere. Anywhere. Ooh. Oh yeah, they weren't lying. I could do this. I could start my morning every day with this stuff. <laughs> So at this point, we knew the tacos were going to be good. It was just a matter of doing the obligatory taco baptism. You know, do it for the gram, get that money shot, because these things did not disappoint. So I can honestly say that was probably one of the best tasting tacos I've had in a long time. And that birria, that's legit. Like, birria is all about the flavor. There's so many ingredients that go into it. Um, but if you make it right, you get a really tasty broth, and that's exactly what Chucho's offers. I've had birria that doesn't have the same sort of spice or the same sort of flavor. They're killing it here. This is the real thing. So we left Chucho's completely satisfied, but I honestly couldn't stop but think about all my experiences with birria. You know, if I really think back to my trip to Guadalajara, uh, I went with my friend Nadia, and if it wasn't for meeting those two crazy California kids, we would have never eaten birria. I just remember making an Instagram post about it, um, thinking I was somehow announcing it to the world. But it wasn't just that little post, it was the story of the, the Gonzalez brothers and Teddy Vasquez in California, and kind of the social media competition that really took this dish to the next level. I just want to say thanks for making it this far. We're closing the video out here, but I also want to thank um, Taqueria El Jalapeño and Chucho's Red Tacos for letting me film in their restaurant. That's something I've never done before. Um, so thank you guys. Um, and man, birria is here to stay. This is not a fad. This is not avocado toast. Um, forever Mexican cuisine um, has made another statement. And uh, man, let's go get some Casey tacos. And in case you were wondering, yes, both Mario and I got the ramen noodles and birria. It was fantastic. Absolutely incredible.